woke you up. He said, this is a brand new day. This is the day the Lord has made. He has uniquely created this day for your divine purpose. So don't bring yesterday into this divine purpose day. Everything that didn't go right yesterday, stop letting affect your divine purpose today. Anybody here realize you made it to 2013 because God has divine purpose for your life? Beginning with verse number one. I pray you've come to receive a word from the Lord that would challenge your thinking. In the book of Acts, chapter two, verse number one, we'll begin reading. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, suddenly, uh, suddenly, a shift, a change. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Jump down to verse number four, and all. All, 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 all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled or empowered them. Take your seats and let's have a conversation. Yes, Lord, help me with my issues. Today we'll talk from the reference of Lord help me with my church issues. All right, all right. Uh, uh. I grew up, I've been in church all my life. Never had many issues with the world. All of my tears, heartache, and pain were birthed and penetrated in the church. Lord help me with my church issues. Today is the day in which we call Pentecost Sunday. Okay. I pray you come to hear the word of God in a yes, simplistic Lord. fashion today. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which, which means today is the Sunday, 50 days after the resurrection. After Jesus overcame death and after Jesus overcame the grave, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. And 50 days later, we now have what's called the Pentecost Sunday in which Jesus will establish the church. Today, if we would make it in layman's term, today would be the anniversary of the New Testament church. Today, we should be celebrating the power and glory of the marvelous church. Today, we should be testifying of how strong and powerful the church of the living God is. Today, we should be able to declare, just like on your anniversary, that, that we've survived, that, that we've made it, that we have power and authority. Today should be a day of glory across the land. But watch this. The media and the world is mocking the church at an all-time high. They're laughing at us, making fun of us. We are now the result of their jokes about the church. I often wonder how has the church, this, this, this creation,
mission of God, this thing that was birthed from Jesus, this powerful vessel, how has it become so weak and watered down? And studying the, studying the, the New Testament, you, you will see what's called the great dysphoria in which the church was so strong that the world was so intimidated by the church, they began to persecute the church and they began to behead the Christians because the Christians, as the Bible says, was turning the world upside down. The church was not conforming to the world. The church was changing the world. The church was becoming world changers and the world was so upset because they began to call people together to run the church out of town. But what the devil thought was for bad ended up being for good because every time you ran a Christian out of that city into a new city, he took the word of God with him and the word of God started spreading because the church was so strong and powerful. Yet today the church only makes noise inside of the church. My God. The church sits silently by while the world goes on with its agenda. You, you, you know, I love the Lord, but I have some issues with the church. As I was preparing this message, the Lord said, don't, today don't indict the church, but incite the church. That's right. That's right. That's incite the church with, with change. That's right. Incite the church with the spirit of returning back to the ecclesia, which is the call, the chosen, the called out. See, we were called out not to be like the world. We were called out to change the world. And somewhere in the midst of trying to grow the church, we got confused and the church stopped being a church and the church stopped being a spot on Sunday morning. Well, when, that, when there is no clear difference between what you heard, did, and experienced on Saturday night and Friday happy hour, that when you come to church, it's the same atmosphere, the same twist, the same everything. The church has been so watered down, you can't tell who are the believers versus the non-believers. You're so afraid of being called holy. Want to fit in. Come on, come on. But you were not called out to fit in. You were called out to get them to see the glory and the power of the Lord. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, Lord. My God. I love it when Deacon Jones says, I'm not supposed to be my kids' friends. All right. All right. I'm supposed to be their father. Church is not supposed to be the friend of the world. The church is supposed to be the guiding point, the beacon of light for the world. The church should set the example and not follow the example. But we we we've become so attractive, itching ears. We will shout on watered down gospel and shut down on the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And we wonder why we have no real power. Oh, oh, when you go to a Tyler Perry play, that's not real. Yeah. That's make-believe. Yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Symmetrics. So when we come to church, we'll try to imitate what we saw on the big screen, not realizing you may sound like that, you may look like that, you may act like that, but you will not have the power unless it was birthed by God, out of God's word, out of God's vision. We must forget about what the world is doing and go back to being a church so we can save the world. Your happy hour shouldn't be their happy hour. Amen. What makes them happy should no longer make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this before I lose my crowd. Jesus. Go with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Look at verse number 18. We'll just walk through the text. I'm going to show you how the church was established. And then declare you what the church should be doing. And then make a bold declaration that we will be the church. Matthew chapter 16. Look at verse 18 and 19. 
And I tell you that you are Peter. It's a conversation going on between Jesus and Peter. I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades and the gates of hell will not overcome or defeat it. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Watch this. Jesus established the church. Amen. Oh, you're not Jesus established the church. We don't have the right to go back and edit the blueprint. When a building is built, there are architects that design a blueprint, and a blueprint is not just the building you see, but it also includes the structure underground that you do not see. It includes the infrastructure to make sure that when the building goes up, the beams are in the right angle to hold up what's being built. See, you only look at the outside, you only look at the house, so you're trying to do something without an infrastructure strong enough to hold you. That's why when the winds blow, you fall over. That's why when somebody lies you are talk about you or mistreat you you throw in the towel you give up because you had the blueprint you left the structure out you left the foundation out see Jesus said in this world you will have trouble yeah. Yeah. because I go to church I'm going to be happy all the days of my life when Jesus established the church he says I will build my church so somewhere between him building his church and us building a church, we lost focus. The church should be about kingdom business. Because watch this. When it's done right, he says, the gate of hell shall not overcome the church. Now, now churches may fail, but the church will not fail. So if you build your church, you're responsible for keeping your church going. You're responsible for maintaining your church. But if you get it and become a part of the church, then the kingdom will provide. The kingdom will protect. The kingdom will produce. So we got to make our minds up. Are we going to build our own little church? Or will we be a part of the church? The church that Jesus says will not be defeated. It has power and authority. He says, I will give you the keys. The keys. He says, in heaven there's power. In heaven there are promises. In heaven there are possessions. Says, and I'm going to give you the keys in the church. And the keys will unlock heaven. So therefore the power will come to you. The possessions will come to you. The promise will come to you. But you got to use these keys. Oh, you're not, you're not getting this. See, 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 my keys will unlock the doors at my house, but my keys will not unlock the doors at your house. And we've been trying to use our keys to unlock Jesus' house. Matter of fact, we've been trespassing. If the police show up, they will charge you with criminal trespass. Because we're trying to operate at a place we don't have the keys. That's why in the church, the divorce rate is now higher than in the world. Amen. We're using the wrong keys. More people in the church are committing suicide in the world because we're using the wrong keys. So Jesus says, I will establish my church on this rock. Now, now get this. The church has not been built yet. The church has not been established yet. This is a prophecy of the promised power church. And notice, this is a prophecy to Peter of the coming power church. And notice I'm saying the power church. Because the church Jesus says, I'm going to establish. It's going to be a petros. It's going to be a rock. A big church. A strong church. And it shall not be moved. He was letting Peter know what's getting ready to come. 
And then jump, jump, jump down to Luke. Luke chapter 24. I pray you're getting this. Luke chapter 24. Amen. See, we, we got to redefine and reestablish the church. We got to go back to being the church. Oh, there are too many people. This generation is suffering because the church is out of order. This generation is crying out for help. This generation has issues, but the church has issues. So the church can't help this generation because it's too focused on its own issues. So we got to straighten the church issues out so we can help this world come back to the light. Luke chapter 24. Look at verse number 44. Jesus still talking. Jesus said to them. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. His whole early ministry, he was preparing his disciples to establish a church once he left. See, I'll get this. He didn't need a church while he was here because he was the church. So that the church, the ecclesia would not be established until after he left because as long as he was here, that he was the church. So he says, these things I told you about while I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Now the law of Moses is Old Testament, so when folks tell you Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament, you gotta tell them, go back and read your Bible, because in the beginning, let us make man, let us make man, let us make man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus was before there was a was. So you can't take half the Bible and say, I'm only going to follow the New Testament because you're cheating yourself out of the power and the glory of the creation and every prophecy that followed. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Now, 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 the basic definition of a Christian is to be Christ-like. Uh -huh. So if Jesus says the Messiah will suffer, what makes you think being Christ-like does not include suffering. We want to avoid suffering at all costs, but to avoid suffering, we're avoiding being Christ-like. It's not how much will I suffer, how much will I struggle, it's how good God is in the midst of it. Because my struggle don't last always. And every time I come out of a struggle, I come out stronger and wiser. I come out better because God has a plan even for my pain. Yes, yes, yes. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And get this, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. He's giving them the assignment now. He's giving the church the assignment. He's telling them that when I leave, this is your assignment. When did you have the right to go back and change the assignment? When you're in school, you don't tell a teacher what he or she gonna teach. You follow the instructions the teacher sets out before you when you go to school. They give you a syllabus and you have to follow the syllabus. You don't go in and rewrite and reorder the syllabus. You follow the syllabus. But the 21st century church, we're trying to take God's syllabus and rewrite it and rewrite it to fit our comfort level. You're not called out to be comfortable. You're called out because you're chosen. You're called out to be different. You're called out to make an impact. God never told you that when you get on my team, it's going to be easy and sunny. He told you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So why would I need him never leave me or forsake me if I would never have to go through something? I don't need a bodyguard if ain't nobody shooting at me. Jesus. So the assignment is found in verse 47. And the repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached. In his name, the all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And then verse 48, for all of us, well, I ain't no preacher. Look at verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. You are to witness how good God is. You are to witness the glory of God. You are to witness what he brought you from. Is there anybody in here? And you know where a shadow of a doubt. If the Lord had not been on your side, well, won't you open your mouth and tell somebody, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The church is too quiet. A lie will trap all the way around town. Jesus. Come on, yes. At the speed of light. Jesus. And the truth remains right there in Jerusalem. Yes. 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 
you are a witness of these things. He says, I am going to send you what my father has promised. That's the Holy Spirit. And, and watch this. The Holy Spirit does not come for you to get your shout on. It comes to get your power on. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, it gives you a unique level of wisdom and confidence and assurance that when you walk into a situation, even to a lion's den, when you walk into a situation, even to a fiery furnace, when you walk into a situation, even at a dead man's grave, when you walk into a situation, even when a blind man shows up, when you walk into a situation, a crippled man walks in, when you walk into a situation with the Holy Spirit, you don't look at circumstances and situations, you say, silver and gold have I not, but what I do have is a word from the Lord, and I can tell you how to get off dope, I can tell you how to get out of poverty, I can tell you how to break a generational curse, I can tell you how to overcome a jacked up past, I can tell you how to get your mind back like a prodigal I can tell you when you're down and out, how he'll bring you up and out, and you won't look like what you just went through. Do I have anybody in the house? I'm going to send you what my father has promised. Yes. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Because that will get anybody excited. I want the Holy Ghost to give me victory. But, but, he says, but, we, we don't like this part. Because it requires patience. Yes. And I've discovered something. Patience requires maturity. Immature people have a problem yeah, being patient. Amen. So, so, so I, you know, I, man, I'm impatient by certain things. I start checking myself, and that means you're immature in that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm me. I, I know, I know you got it together, but me, 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 me myself, and I. See, but stay in the city until you have been clothed. With power from on high. See, see the problem, the problem, the, the problem with, with, with the church in the 21st century is we, we, we started going before the power came. So we start going in our own might. We start going in our own power. So we, we start building the church based on a sign. A sign. Come on, come on. When, when he gets back. I'm going to tell you, you hit a certain note and you, you'll jump. Yeah. You've been mesmerized by the sound. Yeah. You, you've been enslaved by a sound. We start building off of a sound, but he said build off of the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sound, if yeah. you build off the word, even when the sound stops, Come on. even if there is no sound, the power shows up. See, there won't be no keyboard and no August and no drama on your job. When your marriage is in trouble, the musician won't show up at your house. When your child is on trial, the musician don't show up to court. You better hope the power of God. I've never seen a drama show up at the hospital. I, I'm going in and pray for the music to be right when somebody gets a bad doctor's report. I pray for the power of God to show up and show out. Too many immature folks serving in leadership in God's house. You can't even order your own steps. You tripping up on your own self. Yet you will be chief commander. He gives, he gives, he gives the church the assignment. Praise Pastor He says he, he opened their minds. He opened their minds so they can understand the scriptures. Yes, Lord. Open up your minds. Open up your. On Tuesday we redefine what what, what we call good church. I don't want you to leave and say, oh, we had good church. I want you to leave and say, the word of God provoked my thoughts. The word of God challenged my thoughts. The 
the word of God changed my thoughts. No matter how well I can make you feel emotionally, if you're not thinking it differently, you're going to go right back to the same hog pen, right back to the same addiction, right back to the same issue. You won't defeat your issue until you change the way you think about your issue. And the only way you'll change your thinking is to get a new word. And the word can't come to you if you understand the word. And all you're getting, get an understanding. The Bible is Jesus opened up their minds so they can understand the gospel. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you, Father. Open up your mind. It's repentance yeah. and forgiveness of sins shall be preached in his name. Uh -huh. See, I don't care what we're preaching about. Jesus. If we don't include salvation, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've only heard a lecture. Yeah. 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 You better preach yeah. it. It's not the gospel without salvation. Yeah. 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 It may be a good speech. Yeah. It may be a good pep talk. Yeah. It may be a good inspirational speech. Yeah. But it's not the gospel of Jesus if salvation has not been declared. If you haven't told somebody forgiven for their sins, how to get their life right, and how to change their thoughts. The only thing you did was touch them at the very best intellectually. Oh, my God. My God. Thank you, Father. You better preach this oh, morning. Thank you for the word, Father. But he didn't create the church for to be an intellectual institution. That's right. He got universities and, and colleges and schools for that. He created the church to be a spiritual base so that all mankind could be and find Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say, so be a witness. Uh -huh. Be a witness. Jesus says, be a witness. Be a witness. <laughs> and if you are a witness, I will give you power. Yes. Yes. See, we, we missed it. We missed it. Seek ye first. Uh -huh. If you go to your job being a witness of how good God is, guess what? Now God has the responsibility to keep increasing you on your job so your voice can reach more people. Yes. You, you thought that if you go on your job brown nosing, hooking and crooking, you will get elevated. But I come to tell you, rewrite your formula for success. Go on your job declaring it was the Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. So now the Lord has to hold you up because if you're declaring it was the Lord, they got to keep being the Lord. And the Lord can't let you fail. He got to get the glory. Church still has not been established yet. It's been prophesied and given as a sign. But in Acts chapter 2, uh -huh. Jesus. when they all uh -huh. came together, when they all all right. together. that's why it's scary when you miss church. Uh -huh. When they all came together in the same uh -huh. place uh -huh. at the same time. What happened? Yes. Get him with that job. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I was saying, they were not in a good deposition. Uh -huh. Their Lord and Savior, Jesus, the one who put their hopes in, uh -huh. was now gone. They were going through a period of bereavement, uh -huh. delusion. Yes. They were in a very frightening situation. They put all their trust in Jesus. Now he's gone. Uh -huh. Yet, they show up to the place yeah, 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 yeah. where you go to reach your full potential. In spite of what they were going through, they yet crashed their way to a place. In spite of being heartbroken and, and in spite of not knowing what tomorrow holds, they showed up at a place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. And when they showed up, when they showed up, suddenly, suddenly, hey, suddenly, oh my God. Jesus. It went from being a place where men had their heads down, spirits were low, not knowing what's gonna happen, not knowing who to put their trust in, not knowing the next step. But I come to tell you, walking by faith is not knowing the next step. Walking by faith is walking when you can't even see the next step. So when a man, a room full of men that were going through something, that had issues, but yet they showed up. They were yet pressing their way. The Bible says, suddenly, oh, I feel a suddenly in this house. Suddenly, heaven opened up and suddenly a mighty wind came through and suddenly men that were broken, men that were crying, men that were weeping, men that were desperate, men that were hurting, suddenly they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were from being weak to strong. Suddenly. 
Jesus. They were being enabled Jesus. by the Holy Jesus. Spirit of God. Jesus. This was the establishment of the church. Of the church. Press man of God. And the Bible says that the numbers were added to. As God saw Leah. And throughout the book of Acts, we see signs and wonders and mirrors. The church was at its best in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, those who were following Christ had so much anointing and so much power that was hidden in their shadow. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. 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 Blind folks were being restored. Yeah. Lame folks were being restored. Yes. The church was under attack. Yes. That the church was standing strong. <coughs> but I didn't call the Bible in the book of Acts. Because I got it wrong in the Revelations. Chapter 2. If you take your notes. Verse 4. God tells this church. This powerful church. This church with the assignment of preaching the gospel so that souls will be saved. This church to follow the mandate of Jesus Christ. This church. But in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, God says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken or forgotten, lost focus, turned away from, rejected, dissed, kicked your curve, divorced, separated yourself from, put a void in between. Your first love. Yeah. Jesus. So, so God is saying the church has now stopped being the church and you become something that I didn't create. Yeah. Jesus. As, a, as a parent, have you ever looked at your child's action and said, how in the world did I create that? Yeah. But that's what God is saying about the church today in the 21st century. That's not the baby I gave birth to. That's not the vision I had. You're not sounding like, you're not looking like the church that God said you would be. You lost your power. Take over this place today. Somebody say, sweet spirit. Sweet spirit. Take over this place, God. Take over this place, Jesus. Take over this place, Jesus. 